All right. Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you like the video. It's uh, I think it's very timely for us. So that's what I'll do probably for the rest of the semester. Uh, if I find some interesting uh, videos uh, that is not directly related to our uh, to our discussions, perhaps I can play it to five or uh, seven minutes before the start of the class for for those who came who come in early. Para hindi tayo medyo mabor pagantay. But that's it. It's a nice, uh, it's a nice YouTube uh, video, the allegory of cave by uh, by Plato. All right. And then I also found something also interesting uh, because last time we were talking about Cantorian set theory. Nakita natin na in early 1870s there was a bold attempt by Cantor to formalize the study of sets or collection of objects, and he did so by uh, proposing three axioms that will. Uh, sort of govern this uh, breadth of set theory, the axiom of uh, extensionality, which uh, says that two sets are equal if and only they have uh, the same numbers. Second is the, um, the axiom of abstraction or the intuitive principle of abstraction, which says uh, any set can be characterized by uh, a property P about uh, elements X, right? that only those elements and elements of the set can only satisfy that pretty. And we said that with the principle of abstraction, medyo may problema. And uh, oh, by the way, probably I'll mention the third axiom, muna axiom of choice. It's a little bit technical. We'll talk about it later. And then after 30 years of using this axiomatized uh, set theory by Cantor, uh, there comes this uh, philosopher, mathematician, Bertrand Russell, who proposed that there is a contradiction or an inconsistency in Cantorian set theory. At the Tinatawag na Russell's paradox, or more popularly, the Barber's paradox. And it says that uh, uh, the, uh, the axiomatic system is not consistent because there will be an inherent contradiction, principally caused by the atom of abstraction. Nagkakaroon tayo yung set or galaw yung, uh, yung action of abstraction na magkaroon ng set na ang naman niya ay lahat ng sets na hindi nila lalaan yung sarili nila. And if you remember, we said that uh, it is possible to determine whether the set itself or that set itself is a member of that set. Okay, so yun yung problema natin. And... Uh, Come to think of it, it was the uh, Russell discovered in around 1901, and that's just about over a hundred years ago. And true enough, there is a surviving interview of uh, Bert Russell that is uh, luckily uploaded on YouTube. I sent the link in the in the chat box. It's about 30 minutes long, but it's a nice pampatulog or it's a nice thing, a uh, nice thing to watch or listen to. Especially if you are doing thing, it's very nice and refreshing. Parang parang paradoxical, no? Parang bakit refreshing? Eh, 1952 pa yung video. But it's a nice uh, experience to hear it first and from a very famous uh, philosopher, thinker, mathematician that we just read in our uh, in our uh, in our notes. So Russell, I think, is about eight years old when he gave that interview, and he's still very sharp. And he talks about philosophy in general. So, hindi mathematical yung interview. So, if you guys would uh, have nothing else to do, you can watch that video by Russell in YouTube. 30 minute long lang siya. And uh, if you get so inspired, you can write uh, a one or two paragraph long or one or two pages long action paper. And then you can get some extra credits for it. Para rin mabalanse yung marami tayong kulang na bonus points sa recitation, di ba? So, yun, pwedeng gawin yung kung naganap kayo ng bonus points, little bonus points, uh, watch that video, write, uh, write a reaction paper, no format, bahala kayo, and then I'll put a uh, submission bin in Canvas for that particular reaction paper, all right? So, for those who came in late, I was uh, advertising a video uh, makikita nyo sa chat box yung, yung link para doon. Or you can uh, just uh, search in YouTube uh, a conversation with uh, Bertrand Russell. So it's a 1952 video. All right. And then uh, somehow skipping matters before we go to the actual uh, to the actual lesson for today. I'm checking our Canvas uh, schedule. And it says here that... Uh, okay. It says here that deadlines some um, Friday, November 19, on worksheet number seven. 
So make sure you finish that up. And then uh, tentatively, worksheet number eight is due on the 22nd. Let's see. Uh, I'll let you know on Friday if we're going to move the deadline for worksheet number eight because we haven't started the study guide for uh, for uh, for worksheet eight. So take that. And then I also look further in the calendar, and it looks like dapat sa 20 seconds similar na dapat yung problem set, and it should be due on November 24th. Kaya lang ang coverage na dapat ay etong axiomatic uh, set theory, and then also uh, the algebra of sets. But we are yet to start algebra of sets, so let's move the second problem set to November 29. It will go live on Canvas at 8 a.m. And then the submission would be December 1, right before midnight. And the coverage is uh, hanggang sa algebra of sets. Simula dun sa tinigilan natin sa chapter as a first problem set. Tapos yun. Hanggang sa matatapos natin, hopefully next week. All right. So uh, you can also check your uh, your uh, course guides. And don yung coverage, detailed coverage ng second problem set. Again, second problem set will be on November 29th until December 1. Okay. Uh, do you guys have any requests, any objections to that? Okay. Kung wala naman. Oh, yes, uh, Neil Christian. Sir, hindi po kasama yung PMI mo sa problem set. Ayaw nga, no? hindi pa tayo nakapag-PMI. Uh, siguro magbigay ako ng isang item sa PMI. Thank you for reminding me, uh, Neil Christian. Sige, isang item sa PMI and then set theory. Inutol nga pala natin yung coverage ng problem set one. Oh, by the way, I already uploaded the answer keys to uh, the worksheet on PMI and uh, problem sets 1.2 and 1.3. So if you guys already submitted your problem sets and then uh, nung ginrate ko naman sila, naglagay ako ng detailed um, annotations whenever needed. And I hope your lab instructors also did the same. But if you're uh, if you want to look at um, uh, my uh, my solution or the solution I thought of, you can visit the uh, the answer keys page in Canvas. Nandun na yung problem yung mga answer keys para don. But if you haven't submitted problem set number one because you were excused and given a later date, do not go to that uh, to that page. All right. So that's my only request. Okay. Now going to our discussion now. Ita try natin tignan kung paano ni remedyohan ni Zermelo, ni Frankel at saka ni Scollum in around 1908 yung um, set theory ni Cantor. Kasi ang idea ay na-capture ni Cantor yung mga intuitive notions about set theory. So para nag-work naman yung set theory niya except for the existence of Russell's paradox. So what Zermelo, Frankel and Scollum did was to try to retain the nice characteristics of Cantor's theory, ma preserve as much as possible lahat ng mga results nandon, but remove the uh, the uh, existence of those paradoxes like what uh, Russell brought about. Okay, so yun yung ginawa nila. So they carefully chosen several axioms so that it will uh, it will um, prevent the existence of the Barber's paradox again, but it will preserve yung Cantorian theory ng sets, okay? And what they did resulted into a system consisting of um, nine axioms. Parang last time nasabi ko ay pitong axioms lang kasi tinitingnan ko yung page 21, naputol pala siya, may dalawa pa sa page, uh, sa page uh, 22. But anyway, so this, uh, with this nine axioms, nagawa nilang matanggal yung mga paradoxes dun sa Cantorian um set theory okay pero the underlying uh, undefined terms and the general principles behind the zermelo frankel's column or for short zermelo frankel set theory i na retain meaning central idea pa in the undefined terms yung sets saka elements and one striking uh, i mean uh, underlying principle would be the membership to the sets so dun pa rin siya umiikot so Paano natin masasabi na, or ano yung mga sets na allowed to exist? At paano natin masasabi na yung isang element ay nagbe-belong sa isang set? Okay? So, carried over sila. But this time, let's look at the several axioms. Uh, by the way, guys, do you my, uh, do you see my screen moving? Or now I'm doodling around. Kikita nyo ba? Sa monitor ko, hindi na siya gumagalaw. How about you guys? Hello? 
Hello. <laughs> Ito, magdududal ko. Nakikita nyo ba? Okay, so probably it's just my my uh, monitor here. It's not showing up. But let me know kung mag or something, I can restart uh, sharing my screen. Okay, yan. Gumalaw na siya ng konti. Okay, so ang gagawin natin for today, titingnan natin isa-isa itong mga actions na to. And then papahapyawan natin kung paano niya na-avoid yung paradox. And then uh, ano yung mga... Ibig sabihin, ano yung direct implications ng mga actions na to. Although some of them, we will just state and probably reserve the discussion of them in details for uh, for other discussions kapag kailangan na sila. But remember, actions are statements that are assumed at the start of the development of the theory. So, papaniwalaan natin. Oops. Aha. Uh -huh. Ngayon lang siya nagmumove sa monitor ko. But anyway, yeah. Uh, these are statements that are assumed to be true either because they are very self-evident or because uh, or they are, are simply assumed for the sake of what is to follow. So wag nyo kong ahanapan ng proofs ng axioms. Inassume natin sila na totoo. Okay? Now, the first one is the axiom of existence. All right? So the axiom of existence or ZF1 just says that there exists a set which has no element. So para alam natin, merong at least isang set sa mathematical discourse na ito. And that is the set that contains nothing. All right? So usually, kasi dati ang mathematics is developed for its utility. So ancient Egyptians and other um, early civilizations, uh, they already started developing numeration systems, pero hindi nila kinaccount yung existence ng nothing, or they did not account for the existence of nothing. Okay, so walang zero dati. It took uh, thousands of years before people discovered, oh, kailangan ko pala yung konsepto ng zero. Ganun din sa set theory. That's why the very first axiom that Sir Mello, Frankel, and Scholem uh, theorized is the axiom of existence. Merong isang set na walang laman. Okay? And uh, we will prove later that that uh, set is um, unique. All right? For now, alam natin, merong at least isang set na walang laman. The second axiom is the axiom of extensionality, ZF2. But if you will read it, so you have two sets, A and B. If for all X, X is in A. If and only if X is, uh, is in B, then A equals B. You will notice that this, this is exactly the axiom of extensionality of Cantor. So walang problema dun sa uh, axiom of extensionality ni Cantor, kaya kinary over lang siya dito sa bagong set theory. Okay? So it says the two sets are equal if and only if one element of one is also in the other and vice versa. And this gives us a nice way on how to prove two sets are equal. So kailangan kumuha ka ng isang, gen uh, isang generic element ni A, ipakita mo na i-imply niya na si X ay na kay B din. And then also the second part of your proof is to get an, uh, a generic element of B and show that this is also in A. If you can do those two things, then you can conclude that A equals B. Okay? Now, with that in mind, with ZF1 and ZF2, we can already deduce one nice result, which is in theorem 3. In theorem 3, we say that there exists only one set with no element. So, yung sabi ng ZF1, at least isang set, walang element. And sabi ng theorem 3, nag-iisa lamang yung set na yun. Okay? And because it is unique, pwede natin siyang pangalanan as the empty set and denoted by this symbol here. It's like a zero but with a slash for it para sabihin na wala siyang laman. Okay? So let's see how this is proven. Though the proof is very technical and perhaps it might sound counterintuitive. So let's uh, prove that there exists only one set. Okay? So by ZF1 or the uh, axiom of existence, there exists a set, let's call it phi, that contains nothing. Or that don't have any element, right? That was, if we prove that, we want to show that this set is unique. And I hope you remember the tools or the techniques uh, that we can use to show that uh, a certain thing or a certain object is unique, right? So we can assume another object, okay? So suppose, or, or we assume phi prime is also a set 
that contains nothing. And ultimately, our goal is to show that phi and uh, and phi prime are equal to each other. Okay, or atong null set na to ay equal sa phi prime. All right. Now to prove this, uh, kagamitin ko lang yung uh, yung sinasabi ng axiom of extensionality. So I will get a generic element of the empty set. Okay. But note that this is a false statement. I am getting an X element of the null set or the empty set. Oh, by the way, another name for the empty set is the null set, N-U-L-L, -L, so null set. So I take an, an arbitrary element of it, but that's false because wala namang laman yung empty set. So hindi ako makakuha ng isang X na element niya. So this, uh, this proposition is false, but I'll take advantage of its falsity kasi pag ginamit ko siyang precedent, or an incident sa isang conditional statement, I am free to put any statement here that I like, be it true or false. Kahit anong proposition, yung gamitin kong consequent, yung buong conditional statement ay nagiging true. Tama? Kasi false implying false is true, false implying true is also true, so we won't have any problem. So here I can just put x as an element of phi prime. And I don't care whether this statement is true or false. Kasi either way, this uh, conditional statement is still true. So that's fine. So napakita na natin na pag element siya ng first set, magpa-follow na element siya ng second set. And we'll do the same thing similarly. I'll let X be an element of phi prime, okay? But again, this is a false statement. Then I can use that as an antecedent to any consequent of my choosing. And in particular, I'm going to choose the statement X is an element of the empty set. Okay. So here we have shown that any member of the first set implies membership to the second set. So therefore, by the axiom of extensionality, ZF2, we can say that phi is equal to phi prime. Okay. Or that is, there exists a set that ha uh, there exists a unique set that contains nothing. All right. Or contains no elements. And a proof. Now, such a proof is called a vacuous proof. Vacuous proof. Kapag yung gumagamit tayo na ng false antecedent, tapos dinudugsongan lang natin siya ng kahit anong gusto nating consequent. That's called a vacuous argument. Logically, that's accepted. It's valid because false implying true and false implying false is still a true conditional statement. Okay. So minsan nung, nung undergrad ako Ayaw ko siyang tanggapin <laughs> kasi parang nonsense yung proof. Pero logically speaking, this is a valid argument. And that completes the proof. Okay. Now from, uh, from, from the action of extensionality, we can come up with theorem 5, which enumerates three nice properties of equality of sets. Okay. The first property is reflexivity or uh, yung pagiging equal ng set sa sarili niya. Second is the symmetric property. Uh, kapag ka si A ay equal kay B, si B ay equal din kay A. So, pwede mong balik ta rin yung nasa equality of sets. Right? And, the, the, and then the third property is transitivity. Kapag ka si A ay equal kay B, tapos si B ay equal kay C, therefore si A dapat equal din kay C. All right? So, you can prove this uh, three statements, I think, using only ZF2. So, wala kayong magiging problema. All right. Now, this is a nice example of a, re of a relation. The equality relation possesses this properties of what we call an equivalence relation. So, pwede nyo sabihin na ang, is ang equality relation ay isang example ng equivalence relation. Kasi ang equivalence relation ay isang relation that possesses reflexivity, symmetry, and transitivity. So uh, later in the course, we will look at uh, the classes of equivalence relations, iba't ibang example pa ng equivalence relations. But I would like you to keep in mind that we have already encountered an example of equivalence relations in the person of the equality of sets. Pero babalikan natin to later because equivalence relations play a huge role in theoretical mathematics. Okay? So with that, 
uh, we end uh, our short discussion about ZF2, but we have already seen ZF2 before. So just let me know if you have some questions so far. Um, yeah, just raise your hand or unmute yourself. Because if there are none, alatanyo na nagkahabol ako, no? So I, I would like to go to ZF3, which is, which is the action scheme of subsets, all right? So the action scheme of subsets can be thought of as a refinement of the Cantorian intuitive principle of abstraction. So principle of abstraction, sabi lang natin doon, ang isang set, pwede mong makarakterize as a, uh, by a property P, all right? So membership to a set can be um, dictated by a property B about excess, all right? So ito yung sabi ng principle of abstraction, but putting no big restriction on this um, abstraction of elements of the set gave rise to Russell's paradox. Kaya ang ginawa nila, um, ginawa ni Zermelo, Medyo nilagyan niya ng konting uh, restriction o konting condition yung principle of abstraction. Okay? Tingnan natin kung paano, uh, kung ano pinagkaiba ng action scheme of subsets sa principle of abstraction. So here, we still have a property P about an element X. And then we, are, we will be trying to, uh, we'll be trying to um, characterize the memberships to a set B using the property P about X. It says here that for any set A, meron kang parang universal set A, such uh, there exists a set B such that for any element X in B, uh, for any X, X element of B, if and only if X is in A and property P holds. So ang sinasabi ng action schema, Para avoid yung Russell's paradox, talagyan ko ng additional condition yung membership sa kahit na anong set B. Sabi natin, si set B will be comprised of X's such that X belongs to A and, and property P about X is true. So nilagyan niya ng isang condition na yung membership kay B dapat predicated not only on uh, the property P, but also to a membership to a set larger than the set B. So parang meron tayong universal set of candidates para malagay kay set B. Yun yung set A. Doon natin kinukuha yung pool of possible members kay B. Tapos para mag-qualify yung mga elements ni A na pumasok sa set B, dapat masatisfy nila yung property P about X. Okay. So, yun yung dinagdag nila para ma-avoid yung uh, Russell's paradox. But before going ad to a discussion of... Uh, sige. Uh, uh, Alright, before going to the discussion of why this prevents the existence of the Barber's paradox, let's look at theorem 6 first. And it says here that the statement, uh, that the set B in the statement of the axiom scheme of subsets, unique daw yung set na yun. Okay, so sabi niya, for any set A, there exists a set B. But theorem 6 further qualifies that and says that there exists a unique such element B. Okay, so let's try to prove that. Mm, and I'll use ZF2 for that, uh, para ma-prove siya. Okay, so uh, proof of that. So let's uh, suppose there exists another set uh, B prime such that B prime is the set of all X's such that X is in A and property P about X is true. Okay? So, papakita natin, ang gusto natin ipakita, equal din to kay B. All right? So, what I'll do is get an arbitrary element of B prime. Okay? Tapos papakita ko element siya ni, uh, ni B. All right? So, if X is an element of B prime, it will imply that x is in A and P about x is true. All right? Kasi yan yung requirement para maging element ka ni B prime. Okay? But look at this statement. This is the same thing as what we have in the axiom schema. X is in A and P of x holds. So ibig sabihin, si x element din siya dapat ni B. So from here, we can conclude that x is an element of B. All right? by definition of the set B in the axiom schema, all right? And then, 
uh, para ma-satisfy yung hinihingi ng axiom of extensionality, kailangan ma-prove ko na kapag ka si x ay element ni b, dapat element din siya ni b prime. But that will not be very different from what we have here. Actually, pwede ngang biconditional yung statements dito. Because if I will start at x being an element of b, the definition of the set b, I can conclude from here, kaya meron nag, nakapagdagdag ako ng left arrow, because that will imply that x element of a and p about x is true. But this guy again is the very definition of membership to b prime. So if this is true, I can imply, and hence the left arrow, that x is an element of b prime. And what do we have here? We have x element of b prime if and only if x is an element of b. So by uh, ZF2, or the axiom of extensionality, b is equal to b prime. End of proof. Because we have shown that any such element, have uh, any such set containing this property must be equal to b. So therefore, unique yung set b dun sa axiom schema of subsets. All right? So whenever you can use double-headed arrows in your proofs, that's fine. Okay? Siguraduhin nyo lang na lahat ng steps dun sa proof nyo ay double-headed. Ibig sabihin, mula rito, dapat may imply niya ito. Tapos mula dito, may imply niya rin ito. Pero pag gumamit kayo ng rule of inference, ang mga rule of inference kasi ay one direction lang. So hindi pwede yung pabalik. Kailangan mong hatian talaga yung proof into two pieces. Okay? Pero kung by conditional lahat, then a single proof or a single uh, a single argument with by conditional statements will suffice. Okay, Bayon? All right. Now, as promised, ito try kong sabihin o uh, ipakita kung bakit hindi na pwede, uh, hindi na mag -e exist yung Russell's paradox, okay? O yung set dun sa Russell's paradox. So, now let's consider the set that caused Russell's paradox, okay? So, sabi natin kanina, uh, let, um, let's consider the set B, which is the set of all X, uh, set of all sets X, such that, pero ngayon, required na yung mga sets dapat dinidefine sila from a universal set by the axiom scheme of subsets. So dapat meron tayong universal set in mind kagad. So here I have x is in A. And ano yung statement P about x uh, uh, Russell's paradox? Dapat si x ay hindi niya laman yung sarili niya. Okay? So this is precisely the set that caused Russell's paradox. Pero tingnan natin kung mag -e exist siya under the axiom schema of subsets. Sabi ng axiom schema, dapat yung mga sets na mag magiging member ni set B, dapat nang gagaling sa isang pool of candidates set A. So kaya dinagdag ko to. Kung matatandaan nyo yung, uh, yung Russell's paradox dun sa Cantorian set theory, ay ito lamang. Kasi allowed by the, uh, in, uh, the intuitive principle of abstraction na pwedeng set X such that X is an element of X, yung definition ng set B. Pero under axiom schema of subsets, kailangan meron kang x element of A. Okay? And then we need to decide whether B is in B or B is not in B. Yun yung, yun yung naging problema natin sa Cantorian set theory. Hindi natin masabi kung si B ay element ba ni B or hindi. Alright? Kasi nagkakaroon ka ng paradox either way. Alright? So ito try natin i-avoid yun by providing a definitive answer that B is not a member of itself. Paano ko ipoprove yun? Ipoprove ko using this claim. That B is not a member of A. Okay? Kasi kung si B ay hindi member ni A, so imposible na na maging element ni B yung sarili niya. And there you go, we have a definitive answer from uh, the Russell's paradox na si B hindi niya laman yung sarili niya. Okay? So this is our claim and we'll prove this via contradiction. All right? So I will assume B is an element of A. So kung si B ay element ni A, ibig sabihin si B ay nasa pool of, positive, uh, of possible members ni set B, right? 
Kasi sabi natin si set A, laman niya lahat ng posibleng maging laman ni set B. So, suppose for the sake of contradiction, na yung set B ay candidate then para maging element ng sarili niya. All right? That is, B is an element of A. Then there are two possible conditions or two possible scenarios here. Case one, since si, uh, si B ay candidate para maging element ni B, tingnan natin kung si B ay element ni B. Okay? But if B is an element of B, ito na yung parang sa Russell's paradox all over again. Kapag ka sinabi natin or in natin na si B ay laman ni B, ibig sabihin si B, uh, si B ay laman ni B, so ibig sabihin, si B ay nandito sa set na to. So ibig sabihin, B is in A, and B is not in B. All right? But the second the adjunct here, so by simplification, pwede mo sabihin B, not an element of B, but that's going to be a contradiction because our assumption here in this case is B in B. So for sure, masasabi ko na to ay contradiction. So hindi pwede yung case number one. And we go to the other possible case, the only other possible scenario, case number two, B is not in B, right? If B is not in B, and yet we assumed earlier that B is in A, therefore, B will satisfy all the prerequisites to belong to the set B. Nakay A na siya, hindi niya palaman yung sarili niya, so ibig sabihin si B, dapat laman siya ng sarili niya which is a contradiction to our uh, to our assumption in this case that B is not in B. All right? So case one and case two both led to contradictions. So our original supposition that B is in A is false. So therefore, we must accept the fact that B is not in A. That is, B is not a possible member. It is not even among the choices to become a member of the set B. So definitively, we can say that B is not a member of B, even though it will satisfy the property P, but there is an underlying assumption. Dapat kasama muna siya dun sa choices or kasama muna siya dun sa universal set na ginamit natin para ma-define si set B. All right? And that's all Russell's paradox. Kailangan lang pala maging mas mabusisi tayo sa pag-define ng principle of abstraction. Okay? And this is what we call ZF3, the action schema of subsets. Okay? Uh, is that clear, guys? Uh, during my discussion yesterday in my, other la uh, in my other lecture session, somebody asked me, Sir, medyo malabo kung pwede ko ba daw tong i-contextualize dun sa Barber's Paradox. Which I find very, uh, which I found very interesting and illuminating. Because first time ko rin siyang naisip na ganon. So inatutunan na kung bago. So gagamitin ko nasa sa mga classical from now on. So remember in um, in um, the Barber's Paradox. So meron kang island. Okay. Tapos uh, meron kang barber. Sabi natin yun yung barber. Okay. Tapos sabi si barber di uh, pwede niya lang i uh, Pwede niya lamang i-shave or gupitan lahat ng mga hindi nagugupit ng sarili nila. And the basic question here is, does the barber shave or cut his hair? Okay? Tapos sabi natin, kung hindi niya dinugupitan yung sarili niya, dapat gugupitan siya ng barber. Eh, siya yung barber. So, there will be a contradiction kasi sinabi natin na hindi niya ginugupitan yung sarili niya, pero dapat gupitan niya yung sarili niya, a contradiction. Pero kung i-assume natin na hindi ginugupitan ni Barber yung sarili niya, therefore, pasok siya dun sa property requirement para gupitan ni Barber. E siya rin yung Barber. So, hindi niya ginugupitan yung sarili niya, pero ginugupitan niya yung sarili niya, a contradiction. Okay? So, paano to nawala dito sa ZF3? Kasi dapat yung pool of, of people whom the Barber should shave should belong to a universal set or to a larger set. Okay? So, pwede mong isipin na ang sinabi ng council ng island, okay, dapat ang, ang gugupitan ni Barber ay mga citizens ng island na hindi kayang gupitan yung sarili nila. 
Okay? So, merong additional, silang dinagdag sa law or sa constitution nila. mag apply lang yung law sa mga citizens natin. So, the barber will shave only our citizens who do not shave themselves. And then by the proof that we have seen here, si barber pala ay dapat hindi citizen ng island. Okay? So now, not being a citizen of the island, hindi siya among the pool of candidates to be shaven by the barber. Okay? So kaya doon nawala yung Russell's paradox o yung barber's paradox. Okay? So I hope that is clearer. And then, now, meron tayong isang bagong term na natutunan dito. So, um, yung ZF3, ang tawag sa kanya ay Axiom Schema of Subsets. All right? Pero we haven't defined what a subset is. Right? So, ngayon, papangalan na natin yung, subs, yung konsepto ng subset. So, a set is a subset of another set written this way. Okay? If all members okay, of X is also a member of B. Okay? So C A, a subset ni B, if and only if being a member of A implies membership to B. Okay? So kung ido drawing natin siya, kung ito si set B, tapos si A ay subset ni set B, so dapat lahat ng elements ni set A na kay set B. So, dapat si set A, something like this. Lahat dapat ng members niya ay laman ni set B. For it to be called, uh, to, uh, for it to be called a subset of B. Kaya subset yung tawag sa kanya. Nasa loob siya ni set B. But if there are some members of A that are not in B, or by the way, you can also say it this way, yung A subset of B, pwede rin nating sabihin that B is a superset of the set A. So B is a superset of A. Big sabihin, mas malaking set. Kaya super yung tawag. Mas malaki siya kay A. Kasi laman niya lahat ng laman A. Okay? But if it so happen that there are members of A that do not belong to B, or if there is at least one member of A not in B, so pwedeng yung drawing niya, ganito yung itsura. Okay? May ilang members si A na nasa labas ni B. Then we say that A is not a subset of B. Okay? Now, yun yung konsepto ng pagiging subset na ni-require ng action schema. Dun sa action schema of subsets also, nakita natin na yung definition ng sets, lagi dapat merong superset kung saan yung gagaling yung possible uh, candidates. That set A in the action schema can be a little set as little as being a superset of the set to be defined or it can be so big so as to be the universal set for the uni for the discourse, okay? Pero kung mapapansin nyo, pag nagde-define tayo ng sets ngayon, usually, uh, kahit ngayon sa modern set theory, ganito lang yung itsura. Set of all x's such that x is even. Okay? So, parang papasok pa rin siya sa action of abstraction. Pero kasi, ina-assume na natin na na-define na yung universal set before. So, posibleng ang universal set natin ay set of all real numbers. So, ibig sabihin, lahat lang ng mga objects na pinag-uusapan natin ay mga real numbers. So, even though we don't specifically say in the definition of a set that X must be a real number, it is already assumed whenever not written, so may tacit assumption tayo, na dapat si X ay member ng universal set para masatisfy yung action schema. Because again, without the action schema of subsets, we will have contradictions like Russell's paradox. Kaya huwag kayo magtaka kung minsan wala yung X element of capital A o hindi minimension yung superset kung saan dapat nagbe-belong yung mga elements ng mas maliit na set. Okay? So yeah, assume natin lagi pag hindi siya sinabi merong underlying universal set that is usually uh, very evident or very obvious in context. Pwede siyang set R, pwede siyang set complex numbers, and so on. Okay? Now, there are some other terms about subsets that we need to learn. Uh, proper subsets. Okay. Uh, we say that a set, uh, a set A is a proper subset of a set B. Written this way, lalagyan nyo lang ng cross yung equality sa baba. Okay. 
So, yeah, ang base sa kanya ay proper. Or, ginagamit ko rin, instead of this, nung creationist list, mas gusto ko to. Kasi mas konti yung keystrokes. So, pwedeng yung subset notation lang, pero wala yung equality sa baba. Uh, this is more um, more evident kung ano yung gusto nitong sabihin. This happens if and only if A is a subset of B, but A is not equal to B. Kasi sure tayo ng isang set ay subset ng sarili niya. All right? Pero pag dinis-allow natin, yung, pagiging, uh, yung possibility na yung set A ay magiging equal kay set B, then pwede natin sabihin siya isang proper subset. Okay? Kapag ka hindi siya proper subset, ang tawag natin sa kanya ay improper subset. So by the way, we define the proper subsets. Ibig sabihin, ang isang set, sigurado tayo na may isa na siyang improper subset, which is itself. All right? So the set itself is an improper subset or is the improper subset of itself. Okay? Now, meron pa tayong pangalawang alam for sure na subset ng isang set. Can anybody guess? Ano pa yung isang obvious na set uh, na subset ng kahit na ano pang set? Sen tinuturo sa algebra, meron tayong alam tal kagad na dalawang subsets ng isang set. Yung sarili niya, sino pa yung isa? Anyone who'd like to venture a guess? Ah uh, yes, uh, Neil Christian. Sir, yung ano po yata? Null set. Okay, thank you. Perfect. Uh, Neil, yeah, uh, yung empty set. So the empty set is a subset of any set for any set A. Okay. And the proof, again, makes use of a vacuous argument. Kasi para mapakita natin ng isang set ay, L, ay subset ng isa pang set, dapat mas malaki lahat ng members ng subset ay nandun sa superset. So membership in the subset must imply membership to the superset. Okay, yun yung gusto natin ipakita sa proof. Now, if I'm going to prove this, okay, again, I'll take an arbitrary member of the empty set or the null set. But again, this is a false statement kasi walang laman yung empty set. Okay, so impossible na magkaroon ng x na element ni, ni null set. So that is a false statement. And a false statement is a nice precedent Kasi pwede mo yan dugso nga ng kahit anong gusto mo. And yet, the conditional statement will still be true. Okay? Pwede kung sabihin dito din that X is a member of A. So this is a false statement implying a true statement or a false statement. We don't know if that is true or not. Okay? Pero itong conditional statement will be true. And this guy... X element of the first set implying X an element of the second set is the very definition of being a subset. So therefore, we can say that the empty set is a subset of any other set. Okay? Oh, by the way, I, I stand corrected. Hindi pala lahat ng sets may dalawang subsets. Okay? Yung empty set isa lang yung subset niya, which is itself. All right? But any non-empty set will for sure have at least two subsets, uh, the empty set and itself. Okay. In fact, kapag ka meron tayong set, any set A, of N members, will have two to the N elements, uh, subsets, sorry. Okay. Mm -hmm. So kung bibilangin mo lahat ng posibleng subsets ng isang set na n yung laman, uh, sure tayo na magkakaroon siya ng 2 to the n members. Uh, I'll try to prove it kasi mukhang naghahabol na ako sa oras. I'll try to prove it uh, when we start next time and the proof would be by uh, the principle of mathematical induction. Okay? But just remember that this would be a nice um, a nice check lalo na kung nag-enumerate tayo ng elements ng uh, ng number of subsets that nag enumerate tayo ng lahat ng subsets ng isang sets. Dapat 2 to the n yung members niya. And true enough, kapag ka si n ay 0, para sa empty set, meron siyang 2 to the 0, which is 1 subset. At yon ay yung sarili niya lang. Okay? Alright. Parang mas gusto ko pala to, nagdi-discuss na lang ng freely <laughs> kaysa sa nag-sumusunod sa workbooks. 
But anyway, tignan natin kung may nakalimutan tayo. Okay, theorem 10. This lists uh, three important properties of uh, subsets. Ang subset relation ay reflexive. Ang isang set ay subset niya yung sarili niya. That could easily be proven by ZF, uh, by the definition of being a subset. It is anti-symmetric. Hindi siya symmetric, pero meron siyang anti-symmetry. What does anti-symmetry mean? If A is a subset of B, and B is a subset of A, then that will imply A is equal to B. Yung definition ng anti-symmetry. Kapag ka si A ay related kay B, tapos si B related din kay A, then ibig sabihin si A ay equal sa sarili niya. Ah, si A ay equal kay B. And this is not hard to prove. Kasi ito yung assumption, ito yung gusto mong conclusion, right? But from the assumption that X is an element of, uh, is a subset of B, that means an uh, X being an element of A implies X an element of B, definition of subset. Then the assumption that B is a subset of A can be rewritten as X element of B implying X is an element of A. Again, definition ng pagiging subset. Right, but if we will take the uh, conjunction of these two propositions, pag inend natin yan, magkukuha natin ay x element of a if and only if x element of b. All right, definition ng biconditional. Pero etong biconditional na to by ZF1 will mean that a is equal to b. Ah, sorry, by ZF2, the axiom of extension. Okay, a is equal to b if and only if uh, x element of A, uh, if and only if x element of B. So therefore, na prove na natin yung anti-symmetry. The third property is transitivity. Pag si A ay subset ni B, tapos si B ay subset ni C, dapat si A ay subset ni C. Again, you can write the proof by, um, by um, writing down the definition of being subset. Ang gagamitin na naman dito ay... Uh, Hypothetical syllogism, all right? Uh, try to write it down. But I would love to illustrate it by uh, uh, a Venn diagram. So on Venn diagrams, uh, hindi siya sufficient proofs, but it's a nice pictorial argument that can suggest how to go about by the proof, uh, for the proof. So himbawa, si A ay subset ni B. O, yun yung unang assumption. Alam na natin, pag nag-drawing ako ng Venn diagram, dapat si A, I totally enclosed ni B. Okay? Yan yung pagiging subset. Pero, yung pangalawang assumption, si B ay subset ni C. So, ibig sabihin, si C dapat properly contained niya si set B. Alright? Kasi subset daw niya si set B. But what do we get here? We see that the set A lies entirely inside the set C. And therefore, we can conclude that indeed A is a subset of C. All right. So, paano niyo siya translate into a formal proof? Well, you'll take an arbitrary element of uh, an arbitrary element of uh, A. Tambawa siya si X. Kaya lang si A ay subset ni B, so X element of A implies X element of B. Definition ng pagiging subset. Pero kung si X ay na kay B, so kita natin dito si X ay na kay B, definitely dapat, eh si B subset ni C, so dapat i-imply din niya na si X ay element ni C. Alright? And uh, what do we have here? We have X element of A implying X element of C. So therefore, we can say that A is a subset of C. End of proof. All right. Okay, I think we have proven a, t a remark. Uh, we have uh, proven uh, theorem fourteen. So that's it. And then, uh, sorry guys. Uh, perhaps I'll need to borrow the remaining nine minutes for the class. Hopefully, uh, you don't mind. Para lang daanan yun natitirang limang axioms at least to state them. The fourth axiom is the axiom of pairing. Okay. It, sa it says here that if we get any two sets, A and B, all right, there will exist a set C such that the membership to C is hinged upon equality to the set A or set B. Okay, 
So merong nag-exist na isang set na magiging laman niya si x kung si x ay equal kay a o equal kay b. All right? So basically, pwede mo siyang isulat this way. All right? So si set c ay equal lang kay a at saka kay b. So yun yung sabi na action ma pairing. Nag-exist itong set c na ito. Okay? But with zf1, we can show na unique itong set na to. Dalawa lang yung laman niya. And it is called the action of pairing because essentially here, we are providing a way of uh, how to pair two elements or two sets. So pwede natin siyang ma-pair into A and B. This will come in handy when we define the cross product or the Cartesian product of two sets. But for now, uh, mukhang walang masyadong naiambag sa set theory yung action of pairing. But anyway, when we go to uh, the definition of the cross product, we'll invoke ZF4. Because without it, we cannot properly define a Cartesian product. Okay? The fifth axiom is the axiom of union. So, axiom of union, we will assume that we have a collection S of sets. So, pwede yung isipin si set I collection mga sets. And then we say that there exists a set U. Okay? Meron nag exist na set U such that X will become a member of U if and only if si X ay nasa isang set A na amongst the members ni set S. Okay? So, pwede nyo tingnan si set S to be a collection of sets. A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, and so on. Tapos, ito yung collection S natin. So, ang laman ni set S ay si set A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, hanggang sa dulo. Kung ilan man yung laman niya. Okay? Tapos ang sinasabi ng ZF5, tayo natin mag-define ng set U na membership kay set U ay determined ng pagiging member ng isa dun sa mga A sub I's. So, yung X ay magiging member lamang ng set U if and only if X is a member of at least one of the members of the collection. Okay. So, etong X na ito na nasa loob ni A1, for sure, member siya ni U. Yung A4, uh, yung Y, na element ni A4, for sure, element siya ni set U. Kapag ka meron kang element Z, na wala sa kahit isang element ni capital S, wala siya sa mga A sub I's, then Z will not belong to the set U. Okay? And the set U is what we call the union of the members of the family S. And it is denoted by this uh, cup-looking symbol, S, okay? Para siyang cup, uh, stands for the union, okay? And we'll go back to it later when we define the union of two sets. But the existence of which is guaranteed by ZF5, okay? Axiom number six, the axiom of the power set, okay? So sa kahit anong S, right, may mag exist na set P such that X will belong to set P if and only if X is a subset of S. Okay? So, sinasabi lang ng axiom of the power set, kaya natin kolektahin into a set lahat ng subsets ni set S. Okay? And the collection of such subsets is called the power set of S. Okay? And that is denoted by curly P of S. So, ang laman ni curly P of S, okay, ay lahat ng mga subsets ni S. Tapos, alam na natin na yung dami ng laman ni curly S, uh, ni curly P of S, ay nakadepende sa number ng members ni S. Uh, nakita na natin before that lagi tayo magkakaroon ng 2 to the n subsets ni S if S has n members. So, therefore, the power set of S will contain 2 to the power n elements. And let's see why, through an illustration. So we look at illustration 19. Halimbawa, si set S natin ay 1, 3, and 5 yung laman niya. Okay? Tapos, gusto nating hanapin yung power set ni S. Okay? Ano yung laman ng mga power set ni S? Kukolektahin natin lahat ng mga subsets niya. And a nice way to do this ay isa-isahin natin lahat ng mga posibleng subsets of certain number of elements. So si S, meron tatlong members. So ibig sabihin, yung mga subsets niya, pwedeng walang laman, 
may isang laman, may dalawang laman, o may tatlong laman. Okay? So, ano muna yung subset ni S na walang laman? Pero alam natin by uh, the by a consequence of the axiom of existence and ZF2, nag-iisa lang yung set na walang laman and automatic na prove natin na subset siya ni S. Kaya nandyan si empty set sa power set ni S. And then tingnan naman natin yung mga elements ni uh, yung mga subsets ni S na isa lang yung laman. So kun collect niyo lang lahat ng posibleng set na isa yung laman pero yung members ang gagaling kay S. So set containing 1, set containing 3, set containing 5. And I think we have exhausted all subsets containing only one element. And then we go a little further. Kunin natin lahat ng L, uh, lahat ng subsets ni S na tatlo yung laman. So, uh, sorry, na dalawa yung laman. So, we'll have 1 and 3. Oops, pag-partneran ko sila. Tapos, si 3 at saka si 5, pag-partneran ko rin sila. Tapos, si 1 at saka si 5, pag-partneran ko rin sila. So, ibig sabihin, meron tatlong elements, uh, meron tatlong subsets na tigda dalawa yung laman. And they are these three guys over here. And then finally, ano yung subset ni S na may tatlong laman? That will exactly be 1 three, and five. And let's count how many members do we have for the power sets. Uh, for the power set of S, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which is as expected that's two to the power three because S has three members. Though we haven't proven it yet, promise I'll prove it next time. Okay, so ito yung axiom of the power set. And then you can also prove that the power set is unique for any set S, all right? Kasi laman niya lahat ng subsets ni set S. Uh, I think that's a mild uh, proof. You'll just need to uh, invoke uh, ZF2, uh, all right? And then let's see. Uh -huh. Oh, This is what I'm talking about, theorem 23, yung number ng members ng power set ni A. Okay. And then ZF7. Ang ZF7 ay axiom of infinity. And this is very important when we will try to construct infinite sets. So ZF7 opens the door for the existence of sets with infinitely many members. So paano yung, uh, paano yung uh, statement niya? So there exists a set A such that yung empty set ay laman A. So you can discern from that that A is a collection of sets. And then the statement guarantees na meron siyang unang laman, si empty set. Tapos, ito yung condition para maging member nung set uh, A. Kung si X ay element ni A, dapat yung set uh, X union, set containing X, must also be a member of A. So nangyayari, kung meron kang set A, alam natin si empty set ay element niya, okay? And then kapag ka element ka ni A, dapat yung sarili mo, union, the set containing yourself, is another member of A. So this guy is another distinct member of the set A. Okay? Kasi itong um, empty set union, the set containing empty set, this is different from the set, uh, from the empty set. So meron na tayong pangalawang member. And then dahil nakakuha tayo ng pangalawang member, dapat siya, okay, union, yung set containing yung sarili niya, dapat ay element din nung set A. Alright? So, meron na tayong pangatlong member. And you can guess, mula sa pangatlong member, makakakuha ko ng pang-apat na member. Tapos mula sa pang-apat na member yon mga nganak yun ng isa pang member and so on, and the process will go on infinitely many number of times. And that allows for the construction of infinitely large sets. Okay? Now, sorry, super overtime na, pero I really need to finish this. Uh, ZF8, um, last, second to the last na naman to, the action schema of replacement. Now, the axiom scheme of replacement is very similar to the axiom of uh, subsets, the axiom scheme of subset. It just says here that uh, we are assuming a property P about two members X and Y or two objects X and Y such that for every X, there exists a unique Y for which the property P about X and Y holds. 
So, pinagkaiba niya sa axiom of scheme of subsets, uh, meron tayong property P about two objects, X and Y, for which tinitingnan natin yung property na tong P ay hold para sa isang X, tapos meron siyang unique na partner ni Y, ano Y. So, it says here that there exists a set B such that X is a member of B if and uh, that Y is a member of B if and only if P about X, Y. Is true. Ang ibig sabihin, ito naman ay criterion para sa membership ni Y para kay set B. Okay? So, dapat una, si property P about X ay nag-hold para kay Y. Tapos, ganito mo, i-construct yung set B. Okay? We'll see again uh, the action scheme of replacement when we, uh, um, in our uh, future discussion. So, let's leave it uh, this way. Uh, sa, sa kanyang uh, statement na lamang sa kana natin siya pagtuunan ng pansin uh, but the axiom schema of sub uh, of replacement can also be used to prove na hindi na posibleng magkaroon ng Russell's paradox pero pinakita na naman natin siya using the simple argument of ZFT so i won't bother showing you how to how it can be done using the axiom schema of replacement uh, pwedeng reading assignment yun na lang siya kung paano niya magagamit sa ZF8 to show the avoidance of Russell's paradox. And then to end the meeting, hitting na natin yung axiom of choice, which is medyo matagal ko nang pinapangako kasi itong axiom of choice carried over din to mula sa Cantorian set theory. Okay? It says here that for any set A, there exists a function f whose domain is the collection of non-empty subsets of A for which B is a subset of A with B not being not empty, F of B is an element of B. <laughs> ano daw yung sabi niya? Um, medyo um, gusto kong i-reward yung uh, statement ng axiom of choice dito. Pero the idea about the axiom of choice is, meron tayong set A. Tapos gusto kong mag-define ng function F mula sa power set ni A. So ibig sabihin, ang nilalagay natin sa loob ni, uh, ni F ay mga subsets ni, uh, ni A. Ang bawa, sabihin natin si B1. Okay? Si B1, dapat subset siya ni A. So pag dinrawing ko siya dito, halimbawa, ito si B1. Dapat non-empty siya, so dapat may laman siya. Tapos, ang sinasabi lang ng action of choice, kaya nating mag-define ng isang function na kapag ka ipinasok ko sa kanya, yung isang subset ni A, sabihin natin si B1, ang function value ni B1 under F ay isa sa mga members ni B1. So, limbawa, si X1 ay nasa loob ni B1. Okay? So, pwede natin i-assign si F of B1 to be equal to X1, where X1 is a member of B1. Kung kukuha ko ng B2, halimbawa si B2 ay ito, posibleng may intersection siya dun sa B1, Pero halimbawa to si B2, ang function value ni B2 ay kahit sino dun sa mga members ni B2. Halimbawa, X2 yan. And so on. So basically, the axiom of choice is uh, telling us there is a way on how to choose a representative for any subset of the set A. Okay? So pag hinati-hati natin yung set A, tiningnan natin lahat ng posibleng subsets niya, Lagi tayong may function na mahanap na makakapili tayo ng mga representative na mga subsets na yun. Okay? It seems very trivial, but it turns out this is very important because the action of choice will be needed when we go to the well-ordering principle. So, masyadong technical yung ZF7 at saka yung ZF9. We'll go back to them when the need arises. Okay? And there we go. Finally, I finish, uh, we finished this uh, module now. Sorry, I'm six minutes over the overtime. So uh, I hope you can uh, forgive me for that. <laughs> so do you guys have some other questions? All right, so if there are none, thank you for sticking around. Sorry, walang recitation ngayon. But if you really want to get those uh, small points, uh, you can watch uh, again. Yung, uh, interview with Bertrand Russell, the 1952 uh, interview, which luckily is in YouTube now. Sinend ko sa meeting chat yung link. Okay, you can watch it out. 
Uh, and then submit a short or a long, whatever you prefer, reaction paper for it. Uh, probably later tonight, I'll open it in Canvas, okay? Para makapag-submit na kayo. Kung wala kayong magawa tonight, pampatulog ka, okay? So, uh, thank you guys. And then uh, let's see each other again on Friday. Bye, everyone.